All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, this is a quick down and dirty on using GoForms. Uh, for this particular session, we're going to go over using GoForms on a Verizon Connect installation. When you open up GoForms, you sign in. First thing you should do is go down to the bottom of the right. We're using an iPhone here. Go into settings and go on top and go to sync now. What Sync Now does, it lets you know that you have the latest up-to-date version of the form that you're going to use. It's imperative that you do this before you start the install. Once, you, once you're synced, let's go to New, and you'll see your name or the name of your company somewhere up in here. There's some older stuff that's in there as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on this. I'm choosing TSCM. That's the company I'm working for and I need to find my form. Now, there's different providers that are in here, of course, and Verizon is gonna be down towards the bottom, so we're gonna tap on Verizon Connect, and we're gonna open up the form. Now, you've got two different views of the form, meaning you can use, use it two different ways. Don't pay attention to what it says on the bottom. I think they've got it reversed. Um, you have list view, which is what this actually is, and then you'll have form view. Let's see if they fixed it. Okay, so there's our form view. What form view is, this is what the customer will actually see. And the idea is to go from, work your way from top to bottom, entering all of the information, starting with your customer name, customer name, so on and so forth. Um, I'm gonna go to list view because it just works better for me. And it, e either way, it does the same. And for some reason, it's not working. Go back and forth between the two. Make sure you get your information in. This is self-explanatory. Let's start from the top. Section one, the Verizon purchase order and the ticket number. That will be in every job that you receive. Competitor removal serial number. That's if you remove an old device from a vehicle. Um, if you can record the serial number, the vehicle has not been damaged. Scan the barcode. If you can't scan it, just enter the barcode in there uh, manually. There's a provision to do that. Um, the company name, who are you doing the install for? Joe's HVAC, Jim's um, heating and air, whatever. Work type, let's select, what, what are we doing? We're doing an install, a reinstall. Uh, reinstall is when you're take, somebody hands you a, a used device and you put it into a vehicle. Deinstall, of course, is just a pure removal. Dere, taking it from one vehicle and putting it into another, all in one shop. A swap. Swap is a part of a service, you're coming up, the box is no good, you're just swapping it out. Unplug, um, unplug the old one, plug the new one in. Service repair could be um, fixing wiring, blown fuse, bad ground, etc. Upgrade, uh, customer could be upgrading old stuff to new stuff. Just check something that's in there that pertains to what you're doing and hit done. Device sticker, device sticker, every one of these devices has a sticker on it, meaning a label. Um, we want the serial number off of this. And if you can see this, um, you can see where I've highlighted that. That's the actual device number, and there's the barcode for it. You can actually scan it or enter it in manually. They all have it. Look where the arrow is. There's a serial number. That's what you want to enter into this. Even um, when working with the cameras, um, there's actually a serial number for the camera itself, it's the white label on the left side of all Verizon CP2 cameras. Do not scan or enter the green one. Pre-installation notes, self-explanatory, windshield's broken, vehicle won't start. Of course, the vehicle won't start, we don't work on it to begin with. Put that in the pre-install notes. Prior damage picture, at, which is add an image, allows you to take a picture of the broken windshield, the dashboard falling apart, Dodges, um, Dodges and other vehicles, you know some of this stuff's gonna be broken up. Just take a photo of it so you don't get blamed for it. That's why we put it in there. Year, make, model, model vehicle label. Vehicle label, what is it? Truck 12, um, X-ray 6, septic 4, whatever it is, that's your vehicle label. If they don't have anything, use the last four of the vehicles, VIN. Plate registration. Hey, same thing, if it has a license plate, fine. If not, can't find it anywhere, no registration to be found. Just use, again, the last four of the VIN. That's a unique identifier. And um, it's, I doubt you'll ever run into where you have the same last four on the same job. Um, the state, VIN, VIN's gonna allow you to um, enter it manually. And we want you to take a photo of it. Why? Because sometimes stuff can be wrong. Ones can be L's and sevens and I's and B's can be eights, et cetera. 
take a photo of the VIN tag, not the metal one stamped on the side, unless that's your only choice on an older semi. Take a photo of something with the VIN on it, preferably from inside of the door jam. Um, odometer hours. Um, you know, what does the odometer say? You got to have something. If it's broken or it's, it doesn't work, just put numbers in there, 000 or 999. Put something in there to show that you attempted to get it and you cannot get it. Um, does the work match the order? If you get a work order that says install two devices, your, your work order should match where it says you're going to install two devices or install a device. You shouldn't deviate from it. If it does, you know, did the work match the order? Just hit yes or no, hit done, that's it. Let's talk about peripherals. Driver ID, um, did you put in driver ID? If so, check the box. Garmin cable, if you put in a Garmin cable, check the box. ECMD, um, otherwise known as logbook cable, kind of the same thing, just put a check by the box. Driver facing camera, panic privacy button, we don't see many of those anymore, but driver facing camera, check the box. Um, inputs used, um, if you're doing any PTO work, etc., just figure out which input you actually used. Um, says, did you, you know, use an extra wire for PTO? I mean, not, it's, it's not real important unless just don't do, we deal with this unless you're doing PTO. Um, input relay added. Occasionally we do do that on PTO um, installation operations. It's very rare with Verizon that we do that, but it's either a yes or a no. Um, unit mount picture. We want to know where you place the camera on the glass. Um, of course, you know, where did you put the GPS device? Um, take a photo of whatever it is you're doing. Um, if you put the unit under the dash, uh, left side of the steering column, up high on the dash, of course, you're probably not going to get a good picture of it, but just take a photo so somebody knows where you put it. Um, wiring picture, where did you grab your power from? Back of the key switch, um, a wiring loom coming through the firewall. Show somebody where you got your wiring. This is important to help protect you to show that maybe you weren't supposed to go into a uh, body control module or an engine module or ABS module. S show somebody that doesn't know where you got your power and your ignition from. Ground, we want to see a self-tap a self -tap ground with a ring terminal somewhere on that vehicle. Take a picture of it. Got to see it. Camera placement, self-explanatory. Where did you place that camera on the windshield? It should always be usually to the right, uh, right and as high as you can go on the glass without sticking it to the um, to the black stuff that kind of um, the, the dot matrix, if you will. Um, show where you put your camera at. Um, also, it might be a good idea to show how you can flip your visor down inside the vehicle, especially with the driver facing cam to show that that driver camera is not blocked. So take a picture where you put the camera, put it in here. If you mess up, the app allows you to, to go and delete it and do it all over again. Remove device miscellaneous picture. Um, if you took out, a, you know, whatever it is you took out, if it's a, a people net uh, cinder block or whatever it is, take a picture of it to show that you actually did a device removal. Um, sometimes customers will complain that there's no record of having an old device in there and they don't want to pay for it. Just show what you took out. Take a picture, quick picture of the old one. Uh, competitor removal serial number, if you can get it, fine. If not, just put something in to show that, yeah, you did pull another device out. Um, the device you installed for Verizon. Um, again, back to serial numbers right here. Look, there's a serial number of the device that you actually installed in here. There's a section for the one you removed. Uh, the license plate off the vehicle that you pulled the old device from and the VIN of the vehicle that you removed the device from. This is handy if you're doing a deinstall, reinstall. Um, customer gets a new vehicle, you're taking it out of an old vehicle. Like I said, just use common sense and fill this stuff in. Uh, screenshot of camera alignment. Of course, a lot of times the app does not work. We get that. Um, but at least if you can sit there and show Show something. If you do use the app and it shows the photos of the, what the camera sees, grab a screenshot of it. And you'll be able to add that in here under the image. Did you use the app? And it's going to be pretty simple, yes or no. Again, we understand a lot of times the cameras are not in the app and you have to physically call it in. And it's going to ask you, did you call it in, yes or no? Part of the job is calling it in. Who did you speak with? Kathy, Margaret, um, Joe Smith. Just put a name in there for whoever you did speak with and go from there. Additional notes, um, you put something in here. Uh, 
uh, camera not in app. Sometimes the devices won't be in the app. Whatever it is, just if there's a pro if there's a problem with the job, put the notes in there. If there's something you need to cover your butt with, put it in the notes. Um, it's pretty you know pretty simple. We're going to change the order of how this stuff is all entered to make it easier for the techs. Customer signature. If the customer is there, ask them to sign up, sign off on it whenever you're done. If they're not there, they left you. Just get somebody to sign to acknowledge that you were there. Uh, make sure you get their name. Joe Smith, Kathy, lady at the front desk with glasses, whatever it is, get somebody to show that you were there. Now, we can also go back to the form view. And as you can see, you'll be able to see the photos of you know, see the photos that you took. If you need to take more photos, take them at your own free will. There's a little map on the bottom left that shows you were actually there on site um, to do the work. If there's stuff that is missing on here and it asks you to go back, it won't allow you to submit it. Just do what the form asks you to do. Um, if you can't enter anything, put a zero in there if it won't let it submit. Just you know, enter information that's required to get it in there, but don't substitute a zero for a VIN, truck label, something that you know you can get or something that you can fill in. Always remember, if you can't get the information, use the last four or five of the VIN um, to fill it in. Serial numbers are self-explanatory. Again, on this, on the devices, there's a serial number, bottom right. There's also a barcode you can scan. Um, Zergo is the same way. Sometimes you should be able to scan this most of the time. If it doesn't, just enter it manually. It's the number on top. With the, uh, with the cameras, a little bit hard to see right here, but get the white label. Don't get the green one. We don't need the green one. We need this label. Starts with Alpha 5 Mike Victor. That's what we need to get. That's the camera serial number. If you, if you call in the green number, you throw the boxes away, you're going to have to go back out to the, to the vehicle and take a photo of the serial number or sticker on the device. So, again, um, we're going to readjust the order on this here in the future to make it easier for you guys. But the most important thing is, is go through this and, and make sure you get your information. And again, when it says things like, you know, uh, a device sticker, that's the sticker on this, not the sticker they provide you with that says this vehicle is equipped with, you know, GPS, camera, or whatever the heck it is. Um, and again, if there's any questions on this, please make sure that you call uh, call Field Evolution or you can also call uh, Verizon Tech Support. They will not help you with installation procedures. They can help you with the device only, and they will not provide you with installation information. Um, all devices must be checked in. If you have a, have a problem with the form, something's wrong, um, you can't get it to check in through the Reveal app, at least you have a record of it with the go form and also you call it in to Verizon tech support. They're open until 7 PM Monday through Saturday, closed on Sunday. Um, make sure that you call your work in and try to get the first name of the person that you spoke with. This will cover you on this. They will take all the information in that can normally be used on the reveal app. If you have any questions, call the office. Thanks for watching.